The Parker Classic is a slender torpedo-shaped fountain pen which was first introduced in 1986 and ran in production until the late 1990s. It was offered in a variety of finishes. I have this one in what's called Lake Thulia, which is a lacquer-coated wood, and Thulia is a cross between a walnut and a maple. It provides a really nice marbling look with a variety of brown and black tones. This pen joined the Parker Classic Ballpoint Pen, which was introduced in 1967, but it's also the successor to the Parker 180, which had just gone out of production. It has a very similar body style as well as nib, which we'll take a look at in just a second. The top finial extends from the cap pretty highly. It's a metal piece with a recess at the top, and it reminds me quite a bit of the knocking unit on a ballpoint pen. The clip is then attached directly to the cap itself. It's in that classic Parker Aero style, and it is springy and functional, but the amount of motion that it has is pretty limited. Um, you can get this over thin fabrics, but thicker notebooks would be a little bit troublesome. The cap tapers down, and at the bottom we see Parker, made in UK. The cap pulls off, to reveal a fairly unique stainless steel gold colored nib. This again shares a lot of similarities with the Parker 180. It is kind of arrow shaped and it's designed to be written both top ways up as well as in reverse. The 180 was marketed to be able to be written as two different tipping sizes, both front and reverse. This one, unfortunately, they changed to be just one standard tipping size. I have this one, it's noted on the black piece below as an F. We can also see there is a reinforcement rib that jets out pretty far into the nib. That's to make sure that the nib stays rigid and it can take a fairly heavy hand, which Parker found was becoming very common as the ballpoint pen grew in popularity. The section starts with a chrome piece that has a flare up to it. And then it has a tapering profile, which is made out of plastic and has a cross hatching design. And that's really nice. It gives you a really good grip. And then we have a metal band followed by a slight step up to the barrel, which tapers down to an end finial, which is another metal piece. And that has a flare out that matches the top of the section. In the hand, the pen is really nicely balanced, has decent heft, and is a good length for long writing sessions. The cap posts deeply and securely with a positive click. And it doesn't really alter the balance of the pen at all. It adds a little bit of heft and also the overall length is very manageable to be written with for long writing sessions. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Parker Classic, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen and your standard Sharpie. Before we get into the disassembly of the Parker Classic, I wanted to take a moment here to compare it with a few other fountain pens. Up top, we have the Lamy CP1, which is a slender, tubular-shaped fountain pen that was made in the same era as the Classic. Unlike the Classic, this one is primarily made out of brass with a matte black coating, and it also has a spring-loaded clip. Below the Classic, we can see the Parker 45, which predates the Classic by a few decades. It is also a torpedo shaped pen, but it has a more dramatic taper towards the middle. And also the clip is very much in the same arrow shape as the classic, but this one has a larger degree of motion. So it is able to accommodate thicker materials. And at the bottom, we have a modern pen. This is the Visconti Mirage Mythos in Apollo. I pulled this one in because it is another brown pen that's a torpedo shape. Unlike the rest of the pens here, this one is quite thick and it is a little bit longer than the rest of the pen. Also, this one does have a spring-loaded clip similar to the Lamy CP1, but it is in an arch style, which is something that Visconti has become known for. Let's take a look at these pens with their caps removed. All caps pull to come off and the Mirage Mythos has the most unique capping mechanism, which is held in place with a magnet. The overall length of the pens are quite comparable. The Mythos and the Parker 45 are just a little bit longer than these other two. And let's take a closer look at these sections and nibs. 
All four nibs, with the exception of the Lamy CP1, are made out of stainless steel. The CP1, in this case, I swapped in a 14 karat gold nib, but the original CP1 comes with a stainless steel nib. This one is fully exposed and is swappable with any other nib that fits the Lamy Safari. The Mirage Mythos is also a fully exposed nib. I believe this one is made by Schmidt. And then the two Parkers have semi-hooded nibs. Um, this one is more traditional in its shape, whereas the Classic has more of an arrow shape to its nib. The sections on the Mirage Mythos and the CP1 are quite short. The CP1 is made out of plastic, whereas the Mirage Mythos is made out of metal and it has a hourglass profile. Both of the Parkers have a tapering profile to their section. The 45 has a fairly traditional shape to its section, whereas the Classic has a more unique shape with a chrome flare at the top, followed by a tapering profile that's made out of plastic, and it has those nice cross-hatching patterns in it. Let's take a look at these pens with their caps posted. All four caps post securely. The Mirage Mythos is the longest pen when it's posted, and it is secured in place with a magnet. The CP1 is the next longest pen and it does secure in place with a positive click, but it makes for a very long pen. Both of the Parkers have deep posting caps. The 45 has a friction fit post and the Classic has a positive click to post. To disassemble the Parker Classic, no tools are required. The cap pulls off. And if we take a look inside, we can see there isn't a cap liner inside, just a slight step up to seal the nib. So there's no need to disassemble this any further. For regular cleaning, I would just run this under warm water or maybe soak it with a bit of mild detergent. The barrel unscrews from the grip section. And there we can see a converter, which can be pulled right out. And then if we want to remove the nib and feed from the grip section, it simply pulls right out. The nib is held in place by a little collar, which can be pulled through the front. And then the nib just comes right off of the feed. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, let's start with the nib and feed. The nib has a rectangle and a circle cut out in it, which lines up to corresponding ribs on the top of this feed. So you just want to line those up. And then we'll slide the cover over that. That gets pushed into the grip section. And then we can reattach our converter followed by our barrel, and lastly our cap. And at this point, we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Parker Classic, today I selected Private Reserve's Chocolat, which is a nice brown ink with good shading. Take the cap off the bottle and the pen, remove the barrel, Make sure that the piston inside the converter is extended all the way down. And in this case, yep, it already is. It's a little bit challenging to see with this converter because it has kind of a gray tint to it. We'll put the nib in the ink and screw up the converter. Typically, I would expel the ink one more time to get a full fill, but actually that looks quite full, so I'm going to stop there. We'll go ahead and wipe off the nib. Put the barrel back on our pen, as well as the cap. And we'll cap up our bottle as well. And at this point, we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Parker Classic. Cap pulls off. And today we're writing with a stainless steel 
fine nib, which is noted right there. And it's a really nicely tuned nib. It's smooth, it's wet, it's a very consistent rider, but it also is quite stiff, and that's mainly because of this support rib that we have back there. Our ink, again, is Private Reserve. Chocolat. For flex, I'm going to turn the page. As I mentioned, it's extremely stiff. Again, this nib was kind of developed for uh, ballpoint pen writers who tend to write with a heavier hand. Um, so you really don't get any line variation. I think this might be the stiffest nib in my collection. And for reverse writing. There we go. I was at the wrong angle to begin with. Very smooth, maybe a little bit scratchier than the front ways up, but the feed kept up just fine. And as I mentioned, it is um, not really gonna provide you much line variation. I would say it's pretty much identical front to back. So that's maybe a little bit disappointing if it's something that you desire, but if you don't really want line variation and you want to just quickly write something down, then you don't really have to worry too much about which way you're holding this pen. So what do I think of the Parker Classic? I really like the design of this pen. I like its slender profile with that tapering section. Um, it really makes for a very fluid and beautiful pen. I also really love this resin. Um, hopefully the camera's picking up the beautiful different tones that come through. The nib is very unique. I don't really have any other nibs that are like this. And in history, the only other nib that is similar is the Parker 180, which I've mentioned a few times throughout this video. Um, it's smooth, it's wet, but it is also extremely stiff, which is okay. Um, for me, I prefer stiff nibs, especially if I'm doing quick writing. And I also really love how easy this pen is to disassemble. It didn't require any tools, and I could easily break it down to the nib, the feed, the section. Um, if I did run into any issues with these parts, I could hunt for service parts and easily swap them in. So that's really great to see. And I also really like the form factor of this pen. Some people don't like slim pens, but I find them to be quite comfortable in the hand, especially for longer writing sessions. And this is probably one of the slimmest pens that I have. Also this grip with the checkerboard style, um, it really gives you a really nice secure feeling in the hand. Now, is this the perfect pen? No, I think there's certainly room for improvement. And I honestly think that the slimness of this pen may alienate some people. A lot of people steer away from this, the Lamy CP1, because it is so thin. And if you look at these side by side, you can see pretty clearly that the Classic is actually a bit thinner. So if that is something that you don't enjoy in your fountain pens, this might not be the right model for you. Besides that, um, as I kind of alluded to, I do wish that the reverse writing on this pen provided a different line thickness. Um, that's something that I think is a really nice feature, especially for the Parker 180. Those used to be noted with either an XM for extra fine and medium or a FB for fine and broad on the back. And um, now they're just saying F for fine. So that's... Um, maybe a little bit disappointing and a little bit of a letdown. But again, it is a really nicely tuned nib and it's very smooth and wet. So, uh, you know, you have to kind of pick your battles when it comes to being nitpicky. And then the only other areas where I feel like this pen could be improved is actually on the cap. The clip, as I mentioned, it's, it's unique. It's that Parker style arrow clip, but because it is um, attached to the cap body itself, and the length that is actually usable is quite short. 
The range of motion that's available for this clip is very small, and you can't really get this over thick fabrics or notebooks, so that makes it a fairly limiting clip. And then the other aspect of this cap that I think could be improved is the fact that it doesn't have a cap liner. And in regular use with this pen, I actually find that the nib and feed tend to stay pretty wet, which is a testament to the design of this nib and feed itself. But what I find is fairly quickly, the ink in the converter itself will dry up and you'll be left with basically dry pigment. And that's largely because the cap is not sealing very well. So that's kind of disappointing to see. And I do see it drying up at a faster rate than the majority of my other cartridge converter pens that I have in my collection. But with all that being said, I do really like this pen. I think that the appearance of it is quite beautiful and unique, as well as this nib is extremely unique too. Again, the only other nib in history that was designed like this is the Parker 180. So if you want a beautiful, slender, torpedo-shaped fountain pen that you can write with for quick notes, this really should be on your short list. And that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.